righty. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 30 minute weekly workshop. My name is Dre. I'm with Verify today, and I'm joined by Jim Schultons, another SE over here at Verify. And I'm quite certain most of you have heard his voice on here before or probably worked with him already. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Dre. How are you? Doing well, doing well, sir. All right, before we get started, we'd like to mention that Verify supports Cube iOS analytics these days. It's quite the popular feature right now. So if you have any interest, if that's any interest uh, to you, just let us know or contact your account manager. Okay, so for today's workshop, we're going to be we're going to see how to become a widget wizard. We're going to start off with a quick overview of our company and what we do. We'll jump into a live demo where Jim will guide us through uh, all the different CUCM and Cube widget types. We'll pause for Q&A and get some of your questions answered. During the demo, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel at the bottom right of the screen. After Q&A, we will reward one lucky attendee with a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to see if you've won. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting, remote phone control, and change management. But today we're going to be focusing on our CUCM and Cube widgets. But if you have any other questions about any of our other features, you can most definitely take them offline and get those answers for you. Before we get started, I want to announce that Verify now offers a new service that provides man managed consulting services to our customers. Verify's SC team will be engaged on a one on one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding configuration, and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SC to do the heavy lifting of report creation and generation. For more information, please contact us and we'd be, be glad to speak to you more in depth about our new service offering. All right, let's get into the demo. Demo, Jim, you can get us started. I'll pass you the ball. Sure thing. Screen, I get the right screen here. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday workshop. As Ray mentioned, today I'll be showing you the different widget types available for CUCM and Cube dashboards. Give you some ideas how to utilize these widgets in your environment. Uh, next week, we'll cover the UCCX widget, so uh, don't forget to sign up for that workshop. All right, what are the different types of widgets available? We get six different widget types available to choose from uh, for CUCM and Cube. They are, if I drop down this, call distribution, call history details, call statistics, call volume by time period, grouping statistics and utilization or concurrent call activity. Uh, we also have what's called an announcement widget, <clears throat> which isn't really CDR related, but I'll cover it briefly here. If you click on the feature application, announcements the only choice, it gives you the setup screen here. <clears throat> Allows you to uh, create a message that uh, if you see in the background, I've got one message scrolling. Uh, that would be the auto scroll horizontally, and one message that's uh, more static, that would be the wrap text message. Um, and I could change the color, I can change the icon that displays in the top left corner here. So it gives you some uh, ability to, to throw something out there if you want to, uh, your team to see it on, on their, um, say if you have a monitor or uh, big screen monitor, you want to see a message to be displayed on that, you can do that. So uh, with that said, we will get into the actual CDR cube widgets. Um, these first four in this uh, area here are the uh, call distribution widgets. Um, gives you a pie chart used to show grouping summarization. Um, we can do number of calls per day, as you see here. Uh, we could do calls by department. Uh, in this one, or calls uh, to the hunt group and who's answering those. Um, we'll go over these briefly uh, just to give you an idea. Um, <clears throat> if you do notice that these top two do have a summarization up at the top where these bottom two don't, that's uh, your choice whether you want to add that or not. So if we go into widget configuration, the top section is more uh, for formatting. That's where you get your colors, your icons, your refresh interval, 
um, how you want your date, date displayed if, if you've got a date on there and of course the title. Um, for this particular widget, we do have then the grouping configuration. How, how do you want to group the widget? This one I'm doing by date or day of year. I've got plenty of other options to uh, group by and we'll go through those in the other widgets, but uh, we'll, we'll leave this one at day, day of year. And you can limit uh, your display count. This one I'm at five. Um, this is the summary bar where you can enable or disable that uh, those stats from showing and then what you want to what you want to display on that summary bar in this case i'm just looking for total count and total duration As you know with uh, reports you've got a whole um, bunch of different options to choose from and uh, that'll give you those uh, summary stats on the top there so the search sets very similar to reports uh, you can create a search set this one I've got for inbound calls. So I'm filtering by originating size name contains SIP and my original call party would be a four digit extension. So anything that's coming from the outside world to a four digit extension, I'm gonna include in my stats. Um, and then your time period. So we wanna look at the current week for this and um, exclude Saturday and Sunday. And I'm gonna do all day, I can specify a, a time range for these, but I'll leave it at all day. And that gives you the breakdown. This total count is total count for the week so far, 12, just over 12,000 calls, and then broke down by day. If I hover over the chart, <clears throat> it gives me the breakdown. So on uh, Monday, there was just over 5,000 calls. Tuesday, we had a, four, a little bit of a drop, 4,700, and so far today, I've got 2,300 and then my total duration. Um, again, calls by department, I can break that down. The basic um, change there would be your grouping and grouping by dialed or terminating CCM department. So I could have up to 15 departments displayed there. In this case, I've got uh, three here. And this is for today's call. So I'm gonna monitor how my departments are doing on the call. Uh, hunt group, this, uh, these hunt groups, I've got one for previous week compared to the current week, basically the same widgets, um, but it gives me an idea who's been answering those hunt group calls. So we can, we can break that down by, by the uh, terminating uh, CUCM end user ID. And that's what uh, this is showing here. <clears throat> so it gives you some different options there. All right, the next widget we'll go over is the call um, call history details widget used to uh, show details for calls for specific search set. Uh, very similar to the, if you're familiar with the report, call analytics and reports and the history section, this is very similar to that, but it does allow you to add the summary bar. So in this case, I, these are the detail columns I want to see. Again, I can choose what what, uh, what the columns you want to see. Search set would be originating contains SIP, terminating does not contain SIP. Inbound calls, which I've got named here. And this is for current day. So there is a limit. Um, so I've got the inbound calls here, and then I've got the outbound calls just here. So same setup, just showing different results based on my search set. Um, I did want to point out with this uh, call history details widget, we do limit it to 50 uh, display counts. If I go and try and put 55, it's going to yell at me, tell me the uh, can't be more than 50 when we do that, because we don't want to overwhelm that widget with thousands and thousands detail reports again long time to do that. So. <clears throat> uh, another example here uh, for this one I, I want to see how many 911 calls are being made during the week um, yeah we can send out an alert when a 911 call is made but if I want to keep track of it for a week I mean it doesn't have to be 911 it could be anything it could be international calls you can just set up your search set that way uh, obviously 
they have no 911 calls this week, so, um, but it could display very similar to your um, detailed columns. You pick and choose the important you know, for or uh, whatever you're searching. All right, so I'm going to go on. I didn't put ever all the widgets on one dashboard. Um, I did, didn't want to overwhelm one dashboard, so I created a second dashboard and look over the last four um, widget types here. So call statistics widgets. Um, these uh, show counts, uh, durations, uh, average stats. You know, it could be how many inbound calls, how many calls went to voicemail, a percentage of the calls that were abandoned, average duration of outbound calls, and so forth. So this one is call stats for operators. I happen to have two operators that are keeping some of the calls that are coming in. And I just want to get uh, see a total count for you know, how, how many calls are they being overwhelmed by you know, calls per day or if they uh, handling it okay. So he's zero abandoned, so they must be doing a pretty good job. Just two went to voicemail out of all those 300. briefly go into the edit of this. Um, again, just what I want to see here, this is a pretty simplistic uh, configuration screen. Just this, that's what I want to see. You know, search set. This one I happen to be using, instead of creating a search set for the wiz widget, I'm, I'm using an, an existing called analytics report. I happen to know I've got a report called operator. This drop down gives you a list of reports you can choose from. I know that I've got an operator uh, report already created, giving me a report on this. So um, instead of recreating the search set with this widget, I just go, go and choose this uh, report um, to use the search set from that. Uh, do keep in mind that if someone goes and changes the search set for that report called operator, the, the change will be reflected in this widget. So if uh, things happen to change, for you on uh, on a widget and that you're not expecting, you may want to see the search that on the report has changed. All right, time frame, we're just doing current day and all day. That's the stats for that. Um, so today's call stats for finance department. I can uh, see how my finance department is doing on total calls, 150 total calls um, and what their average duration is and total call duration. Uh, this one, I do have quite a few stats that I chose. And since I don't have a lot of real estate on this, this dashboard, and I want it displayed here, I do have the option to scroll over and see the rest of my stats that I've chosen to display. This will kind of go in a circular motion, or I could go back and forth here. Right. <clears throat> call volume by time period widget. This is used for trending. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, you know, trending for the day, for hour for day. So here, if I edit this. This is my call volume by time period type. And um, my time period is, is hour of day. Um, I chose not to show the uh, summary stats on this one. Search set is basically inbound call. Uh, actually, that's uh, yeah, inbound calls originating or terminating. Actually, that's all all calls. So label that anything with with a SIP and gives me my call volume per hour. So this one is inbound call uh, volume per day, and you know for the pre for uh, the previous week, which is signified here. I want to see how I did how my call volume compared uh, day by day for the week. So Monday was my busiest day. Uh, Thursday, either a holiday or everybody called in sick, something happened there. And uh, Friday, everybody took off early for the weekend. So it gives you a good idea of what's going on uh, ever, uh, per day. Uh, you could do a current day or current week to, as well and see how you're doing. This one I chose to do for the current quarter and we show week over week. So see how I'm doing week over week on total calls. All right. 
go on to the grouping statistics widget. Added this guy, my grouping stats, um, similar to that first one we, we went through, my primary grouping type. Uh, this one is, uh, happens to be calls to my operators again. I want to break down those, those total calls and see who's taken those calls out of my operators. So I'm grouping it by final call party number. And again, using the existing call report as operator. So I can see uh, operator at 2910 has taken a majority of those calls. So uh, kudos to, to that operator. And uh, you know, gives you a breakdown. Obviously, if you had more operators, you'd show more here. Gives you their stats for the day. Grouping for hunt group. I've got a hunt group for last week and this week, very similar to the, the other one with the uh, pie chart, but just lets me see in numbers what, what the uh, calls taken by these. Um, I, one I am sorting by uh, total call count. I do have options to sort that, this widget differently based on you know average call duration, average ring duration by the person's name, or you know I can switch the uh, the order of the account or direction. And then I can compare from last week to this week how, how things are going as far as the total call count for that hunt. Um, this one's broken down by day or date, the uh, total call count, and gives me a, a numerical uh, representation of how many calls per day. Go to the concurrent calls or utilization widgets. Um, good for uh, gateways, showing you, uh, you know, your gateway utilization. If you're under, under have, need to add more gateways or need to remove some because they're not all being utilized, um, can get do that on a daily basis. Like this one's current day, I can see how how my utilization is going um, hour by hour in this case. Um, this one here is for the current week. Again, choose to not display certain days or display all days. To give you a better feel for what's going on during the week for your concurrency. This one is broken down by hour as well. Um, this one I've got set to every 15 minute increments and it's for my finance. Uh, how is the call volume in my finance department going? Do I need to add more staff? Are they, are they overwhelmed with calls? Or are they you know, able to handle all the calls? Through this, uh, the data aggregate interval is where you set your interval of how, how often you want to see those stats. You've got the option for every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or 60. Again, I can add summary stats to these widgets as well. All right, that's all I have for the CUCM widgets. I'm going to move on over to a different lab because I've got some cube data in this lab where I don't in my lab. But um, I've got pretty much all the same widgets built, same types, as I mentioned, that um, if I go to create a new widget, and this is where I can choose my cube, you'll notice all the same widget types are available for that. The main difference is, since we get different data from cube than we do CUCM, is what, what gets displayed on, on these widgets. So this particular one is grouping to, uh, today's calls by peer ID, and it's the, uh, you know, the, the pie chart widget. Um, my, my call summary stats widgets over here are upbound call stats, inbound call stats, both count and duration. Yeah, I could combine these into one widget, but for this, I chose to separate them. Um, my call history. Main difference here is your headers. Obviously, we have different fields for um, Cube, so it gives you a whole another list of uh, options to choose from. See those options here. We've got uh, many different uh, 
options to choose from on what you want to display on your call history widget. And uh, these are my grouping, uh, grouped by disconnect code. I've got uh, 419 calls showing network out of order. Could be a problem. I mean, you want to look into that. But uh, this is good for showing, you know, uh, for for current day, what what's going on? Do I have a problem with my network? Looks like I, I possibly do, so I want to look into that. Um, internal error code, you know, grouping. So how many calls per inter internal error code? Do not ask me what these mean. I don't know. Uh, best bet is Google for for your internal error codes. And then uh, calls grouped by peer ID, same as that. Uh, I chart up there, but in numerical fashion, different peer ID. Um, and again, utilization, very similar. Uh, this one I've broken down by half hour a day for the week. So monitor my usage on my uh, few routers. Um, so uh, I just wanted to go on this 419. So I'll show you, I want to show you how to copy a widget. So we're going to take this call history widget. I want to see what these 419 calls are. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this widget. Um, I can copy to a different dashboard here. Let's do that, select a different dashboard, but I'm just going to copy it to the same one. So I'm going to make a copy of it. It's going to throw it at the bottom usually, and then I can edit this. And then my third set, I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to add disconnect cause code. In this case, this gives me a pick list. I'm going to choose network out of order. Back to my configuration. Summary stats, total call count. Okay. And remember, I had uh, 419 calls network out of order. This will give me give me an indication of what those calls are. And what you know, I can obviously display more information about the calls in the details, but this will break down the 419 calls here. With Cube, we do get multiple records per event. Um, so it gives you the option to you know, expand this if there are uh, multiple records, which most of the time in Cube there will be at least two of them. So I believe that's all I have for today's um, widget webinar uh, workshop, not webinar workshop. Uh, Dre, do we get any questions that came in? Uh, no, not yet. No questions right. as of right now, but we can give everybody a minute here if they want to ask in the Q&A panel here at the bottom right of your screen. Certainly. While we're, while we're waiting, I could go over uh, the appearance up here. You notice the appearance. This is for the overall dashboard appearance. I can um, change my font size. Get the, if you're you know, going blind like me, you can make it bigger or smaller. Uh, your vertical spacing, just uh, for appearance, how, whatever you like. Um, and then on each widget, you have the ability to do the same thing. Um, you, know, you can change the font size on widget, you can make it bigger or smaller. A <laughs> couple questions come in. Uh, first right. from Scott, is is, uh, is this available to review again later at amateur speed? Yes, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I do apologize. Scott. We, 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 they give us a half hour. You got to try and fit it in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we do record all these and they're available on our website under the webinars. Now the questions are coming in. Uh, I got a question from uh, Laura. Uh, could you show again how to do a widget showing what agents answered the call for a hunt group? Yeah. Um, so if you just want to see the graphical uh, pie chart, 
mainly your primary grouping would be your uh, end user, terminating end user, because that's who's answering the calls from the hunt group. And then your search set, we usually, uh, you could use hunt pilot number. I like to use original call party because it's usually filled in the uh, same hunt pilot number as the original call party. So you'd put that in here. Um, hopefully that answers your question. All right, we've got another question here from Adam. Uh, on the last upgrade, we lost our dashboard. Any way to back up or restore? Um, well, I would, it's kind of hard to answer. It could be a number of things on that. Um, you know, I would suggest opening a ticket. We, we, I've seen that occasionally. It could be an easy fix. Um, maybe something's locked or, um, I've seen it with permissions. I think you may have too, Dre. Yeah, sure. definitely. That could be definitely <clears throat> one. Adam, if you want to put in a support ticket with us, uh, support at verify.com, it will automatically open up a ticket for us, and we can uh, help you out with that and see if, uh, what happened there. I'll make sure Jim uh, takes that ticket. Yeah. <laughs> You'll take the <laughs> afternoon <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, Scott also said uh, to talk to uh, Taylor Lee about your license expiring there. Uh, apparently, she's uh, running some yeah. some good deals. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got some uh, I've got some ways to to fix that though. Very easy. Thanks for the tip though. <laughs> uh, looks like I've got another question. Uh, can you trigger email alerts for any widget related info slash stats? Um, no, unfortunately, we don't have that option unless you know something I don't, Dre. Um, <clears throat> thinking for a second if we can do, if we can, I mean, we can, uh, I mean, how, I mean, if it's like a nine, I get that, but yeah, we do have the alerts. Um, yeah. Available. So that, you know, under uh, configure in the reporting module, got this alerts. So you can set up basically an alert from here and use what you what you have in your widget. Um, 911, like Ray said, you can set that up in your search set here. I think um, <clears throat> UCTX, we may have something coming down the pipe. Uh, maybe uh, that'll be covered next in next week's webinar as well. Oh, we do have, um, yeah, it's coming up in later webinars, but uh, we're gonna have those CCX alerts coming in uh, version 13. All right, yeah. A little early to talk about but yep. <laughs> uh that, that is coming so that's going to be huge all right yeah make sure everybody to you know march time is when we're going to be doing all our version 13 webinars so all the new features coming to 13 we got a lot of good stuff coming in there so make sure you guys sign up for our march webinars All right. I think that's all the questions I see in here. All right. Stop sharing. All right. Great job, Jim. Thank you so much. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to award this week's Amazon gift card winner. And the winner is... Michelle Tominelli, congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to receive an email regarding your Amazon gift card. So congratulations. Awesome. Congrats. All right. Next week's workshop is going to be another workshop on some widgets, but we're going to dive deep into those CCX widgets. Uh, and that's going to be hosted by Brian and Victor. So make sure you guys registered. Regist register for that. And don't forget, March, we're going to have all those big webinars regarding thir uh, the 13 version and the new versions coming out in that. So. Thank you, everybody, for your time, and I hope you guys have a rest of, uh, good rest of the week. Thanks, all. Have a great week.